Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our prayer week uh, 2021 as we set out on this new year uh, with this new vision and uh, in this new hope of what we're going to see God doing in and through the life of our church. Uh, I'm here in the prayer room. A year uh, ago we were beginning to meet together in this place uh, to pray through uh, the resources that Sue had put, us, uh, put together for us, uh, referencing particularly the 2 Chronicles seven fourteen scripture about uh, the need for us as God's people to come together to humble ourselves and pray and see how God is going to then work in us through those things. Of course, we come together in this moment in a very different situation from 12 months ago. As we move into 2021, who would have thought then in that week that we would be doing this prayer week isolated, scattered, not gathered together, sharing in prayer, face to face, singing together and all that stuff that we really do miss. I want to say a really big thank you to Sue for all the hard work that she's put in. Uh, I know that she's been working on the Prayer Week material for a good few months now, uh, from seeding the idea to uh, making the resources and preparing the resources, finding the appropriate videos and all that kind of stuff. Thanks to Elaine as well for helping her get the material ready and sent out either by post or via email. Please do check every day your email to make sure that you're picking up all of the material that's going out. Look at the schedule, see what's coming up and uh, engage with what's going on. So thank you Sue, thank you Elaine and thank you too already for your prayers in the week that is to come. Thank you for connecting with us in prayer. Each morning there's going to be one of these little videos that just sets the scene, sets the, sets the scene if you want for, for your prayers for the day, sets the scene of where God is leading us in these moments, but hopefully will just stimulate you in your prayer life, in your conversations with God and with one another as we gather in this way. As we come this week, we're going to look at the passage of scripture from John 4. And I've preached on this in the last few years. And it's a scripture that spoke into um, the winter shelter, the well coming into fruition. And, um, you know, it's the theme of that of kind of like, you know, I want a drink. I want a drink. And the desire for us as churches that have brought the well into, come into being... Uh, is around providing that love and that care to the whosoever in our community, particularly the most vulnerable. It's a scripture that I really love, and we're going to listen to the first eight verses now. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptising more disciples than John. Although in fact it was not Jesus who was baptised, but his disciples. So he left Judah and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of the ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So here we are, doing what we do as Christians, meeting together to pray. And in this story, this is what is happening for the woman. She is doing what she has to do, what she needs to do. She is coming to the world to get water. Jesus was doing the same. Jesus comes here in his, on his way through this land to his final destination. It's, not his, it's just a stopping off point for him. For the woman, 
It is the main reason she is here. Why is she there in the heat of the day? Well, there are loads of reasons why, which we will discover through this story. And I encourage you to read John 4 all the way through to, to get a sense of who she was. Now, you could suggest in these days that she was going at the hottest part of the day to socially distance. That wouldn't be unreasonable in a COVID world. But there are some other reasons why, or there are the proper reasons why, she is coming to the well as she does. She was a Samaritan. She wasn't a Jew. She was kind of out of the, the kind of community around her. She did not want to connect with Jews and the Jews certainly did not want to connect with her. She was a woman. Again, in the context of this community and that society, they were frowned upon. Uh, they were pushed to the side so much more than they are today and we still have a lot of work to do. She was a woman whose reputation preceded her. Jesus speaks into the reality of what her life has been like and the failings that she has been part of. She is there because she doesn't want anyone else to see her. She is there because she doesn't want anyone else to know about her life. Jesus is there to get a drink. And in this moment, there is a connection. For whatever reasons these two people come to this moment, Jesus allows a connection to take place. And he strikes up a conversation with a very simple question. Can I have a drink? Jesus meets this woman right where she is. And they begin to connect in a deeply spiritual, prophetic and quite powerful conversation. This woman, by the end of it, is one of those few people who discovers via Jesus himself that he is the Messiah. This week, we have an opportunity to connect with Jesus and to connect with one another in and through prayer. Yes, we can't do it as we want to, but do not let that be a barrier for our prayers to be lifted up right where we find ourselves this morning and in the days to come. We are here in prayer this week to make a connection with God first, first and foremost. And I pray that that will spill into making a connection with one another. I really miss praying with other people. It isn't the same over Zoom, that is for sure. But I am grateful for those moments that we have been able to do that. I really miss praying as a church in our main hall where, where, there are need, where there is a need. We come and place our hands in hope and expectation that God is going to move in the person's life that we stand around. I really miss those quiet, intimate moments where something, uh, so often nothing is said. And you can sense the Holy Spirit ministering to us in that quiet moment. Being connected, especially in prayer, is one of the key components of a healthy and thriving church. And in these particular, particular difficult days, it is really hard to do and do really well. The normal ways we do it have gone and we are still trying to adapt with how we need to do it now. The ever-changing dynamics of our society, of the restrictions, of the, the things we can and can't do or should and shouldn't do. They may feel just so overwhelming. They may feel like a barrier for us to connect with the world and particularly for us to connect with our church. But we shouldn't let these things be a spiritual barrier. They cannot come between us and God. They cannot become, they cannot get between us and God as we speak to him and as he speaks to us. Jesus in this encounter makes the connection with this woman and the woman responds. She could have turned away and said, Nah, this, this isn't for me, I shouldn't be doing this, and, and gets out of there in that moment. The external reasons become so irrelevant to this conversation. 
And it is the internal things that are going on for Jesus and this woman that bring them together and this conversation that flows, this connection that is made. Of course it is Jesus that makes the first move. He made that move for us by dying on the cross so that we could be connected intimately, personally with our Father through the Holy Spirit. And he meets you today where you are to make a connection with you. Are you ready to make a connection with him? Of course it is a challenging situation. There is a lot of fatigue around and maybe you even feel fatigued in your prayer life. Praying for the same things and nothing seems to be changing. Maybe you feel worn out and maybe you just feel really isolated. We all feel different, particularly in these moments. There's a challenge for us though as a church to step up in prayer and connect with God and connect with one another. To open our lives and to make ourselves vulnerable. To allow Jesus and to allow one another to speak into who we are, to our prayer life and to the mission of our church too. Are you ready to have a connection with God this week? Are you ready to make a connection with others in our church? I hope so and I long for that to be true. And so as we go through our prayer week, not only do you have time and space and resources to pray and hear from God, I'd encourage you to take the opportunity to make a connection with someone else. There are a few ways that this is going to happen in part of our structure and programme for the week. There's going to be tonight on Monday, uh, Monday evening between 7.15 and 8pm uh, a Zoom prayer meeting. Usually we have on Tuesday but we're going to put it on Monday at the beginning of our prayer week. An opportunity to catch up, yes, uh, to worship and an open time of prayer to just allow us to pray for our church and pray for our prayer week and listen to God. So please do come along. If you've not used Zoom before, um, you've been a bit nervous about it, please do speak to Elaine or myself and we will help you get that sorted. You don't have to come on with a camera, as long as you've got audio, you can hear what's going on, you're able to do that. It would be great to have you with us. There are going to be other times during the week, on Wednesday, you can contact Sue or myself uh, to receive prayers for healing. Again, this can be on the phone, on Zoom, or just write it down and we will pray for you within that hour, specifically, specifically around healing. And again, the details are on the sheet provided. On Friday morning, the coffee and chat room will be open on Zoom. And on Friday evening, we're going to have a conversation about what does life in mission look like for our church in this coming year and beyond. As part of our 2021 vision, we want to begin to see how God needs to shape the mission of our church. And we really want you to be a part of that conversation to inspire us and to be the voice that God needs you to be to help us plan and move forward. If you want more details, of course, please do contact me. Details are at the end of the video with the email and stuff. If not, check the newsletter. So are you ready to make a connection? In those very practical ways as part of our structure, our programme this week, or in those personal ways, those that you haven't spoken to for a while, those that are on your heart to reach out to, I encourage you to do that. Allow God to make a connection with you by beginning to make a connection with him and allow God to speak to us as a church to connect in prayer during this week. May God bless you, each and every one.